I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick. Summer is here, and that means it's time for hiking, playing outdoors, and ticks. Fortunately, the Infectious Diseases Society of America recently updated their guidelines on the diagnosis and treatment of Lyme disease. Lyme disease is a tick-borne infection caused by the spirochete of the Borrelia burgdorferi species and transmitted to humans by the bite of the Ixodes tick. Now let's go over clinical presentation. Lyme disease typically includes a skin lesion at the site of the tick bite called the erythema migrans lesion. Disseminated disease can have multiple lesions scattered over the body, and about two-thirds of people also have systemic symptoms, symptoms like fatigue, arthralgias, myalgias, headaches, and fevers. Lyme disease, particularly when it's advanced, can also manifest with neurologic and cardiac symptoms as well as an inflammatory arthritis. Let's start with the basics. If someone is bitten by a tick and the tick is still attached, the best way to remove the tick is to grab it with a forceps or tweezers right at the point of insertion and then pull. Don't burn it off. Two questions come up a lot in the office. One, whether someone who is bitten by a tick needs diagnostic testing, and two, whether they should receive prophylactic antibiotics. First, there's no reason to do diagnostic testing when someone's bitten by a tick because even if they have Lyme disease, the test will likely be negative early on in disease, and there's also a pretty high risk of false positive tests in endemic areas. Second, prophylaxis. When someone's bitten by a tick, we need to ask how long the tick was attached. Transmission is very unlikely if the tick is attached less than 24 hours. If a tick has been attached more than a day, one meta-analysis showed that administration of prophylactic doxycycline within 72 hours of removal of the tick reduced the subsequent risk of Lyme disease from 2.2% to 0.2%. Therefore, the guidelines recommend that we consider prophylactic antibiotic therapy for adults and children who, where, with, when it can be given within 72 hours of removal of an identified high-risk tick bite. What is a high-risk tick bite? That is a bite by a deer tick in an endemic area which was attached for more than 36 hours. If we use prophylaxis, the recommendation is to use a single dose of doxycycline, 200 milligrams. For patients with early Lyme disease, that is an EM rash with or without systemic symptoms, clinical diagnosis is recommended over using lab testing. That's because 20% of people, only about 20% of people, have a positive Lyme test early on in disease when they present with an EM rash. If the lesion is atypical in appearance and the diagnosis is uncertain, then we can do antibody testing. The important point to remember is if that test is negative, as it usually will be early on, that we need to repeat the test a month later. For early Lyme disease, the recommended antibiotics are a 10-day course of doxy or a 14-day course of amoxicillin or cefuroxime acetal. They're all equally effective. If one can't take doxy or beta-lactam, then the second-line medication is a 7-day course of azithromycin. Remember, doxy is generally avoided in children less than 8 years of age, in pregnancy, and in breastfeeding women because of the concern about staining of permanent teeth. Both the IDSA and the American Academy of Pediatrics, though, say that doxy can be used if needed, but only if needed. So beta-lactam antibiotics should be used as first-line therapy in these groups, with doxy as a second line if there's a significant allergy. I'll say I usually will use amoxicillin as my go-to medicine for Lyme disease in everyone because of the issue of phototoxic reactions as a potential with use of doxy in the spring and summer. We're not going to cover neurologic or cardiac manifestations of Lyme disease, and we won't be discussing Lyme arthritis. This is important information to have at your fingertips now that spring is here and summer is coming. I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick, and this is Medscape.